This is me as Huska, OWA Hardcore Champion, and National Champion at smashing people in the face with things. And this is me, the co-director of the Nebraska Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. Let's talk about all that. My name is Donnie Dodge, and we're drinking a moment. All right, everybody, welcome to Drinking Mo's YouTube. Like, subscribe, turn on the notifications because I do got some pretty big things coming. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Spotify. You can find us. Today, I got with me one of the guys behind the Nebraska Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. The one and only Donnie Dodge. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Appreciate you taking time out to talk wrestling with me. Oh, man. One of the things I really enjoy doing is talking wrestling with anybody that'll listen. Well, let's do it then. <laughs> All right. One thing I like to start off with is having my guests tell me how they got started in wrestling as a fan and then I mean you had your time in the ring so how you got started in the business absolutely I started I I became a fan uh, watching AWA as a kid you know Sunday mornings from the Channel 7 studios Um, it was it was always uh, it was always a big deal on Sundays to be able to sit there and watch watch wrestling and then uh, Saturday night's main event came around Mm. and uh, it wasn't just the 30 minute can WWF show it was it was an hour and a half it was almost two hours and it was basically the precursor to um to, to Monday Night Raw is kind of what the Saturday night's main event was so it wasn't just squash matches it wasn't a good yeah. uh, a, a name against I you know Iron Mike Sharp no no offense to Iron Mike Sharp um, yeah so uh, I, I got to be a huge fan there and then I got into, uh, I was uh, working in Omaha Radio uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And that was right during the Monday Night Wars. And so mm-hmm. I was lucky enough to be the guy I was on the rock station. So anytime wrestling came to town, they would say, hey, we need uh, somebody from the from the rock station to come out and introduce the show to, to, to be part of it. And so I was the only wrestling fan on the roster of the Z92 at the time. So mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, Donnie's going to do it. And I absolutely right. had, a, I had a blast. I got, oh, to, I, uh, imagine. I got to be backstage at uh, WCW shows at Exarban Arena. Um, I got to introduce, uh, it, was a, it was a house show for uh, WWF at the time in front of 8,000 people at the Civic Auditorium. Ooh. And yeah, it was it was magnificent. I got to host Monday night wrestling parties at Hooters, um, mm. yeah, in Omaha. So we would have Raw on one big screen, and we would have a, a Nitro on the other big screen. And depending on what was happening, we'd flip the audio back and forth, mm. and there'd be there'd be 150, 200 people there drinking beer, talking wrestling, watching wrestling, living that history that was the Monday Night Wars together. And so one day I decided, you know what? I want to. I think I want to try and wrestle. I, I'm a, a buddy of mine that's a huge wrestling fan, and he's smaller than me, so I can throw him around, and, and he's willing to let me do it. So let's yeah. set up. A, let's do a street fight. Let's do a fight out in the parking lot. And we set it up, and it was it was awesome. And uh, that was basically the birth of uh, the birth of hardcore Huska. Um, I was- and yeah, and so I actually I met Maury Swanger. Um, the, the owner and creator of the o- OWA, the Omaha Wrestling Association, was a school and a promotion. Um, I met him. I was hosting a WWF pay-per-view at the bowling alley in Ralston. Mm. And we were doing a wrestler lookalike contest. And uh-huh. he came in there and he was uh, he was uh, the, the big show, basically, when he still had when he, the, the giant, when he still had hair. Yeah, when he still had the yeah. yeah, yeah, and so he won, and this guy that looked like uh, like a five foot six Goldberg uh, didn't win. So he got he got all pissed off, and he took out, and he tried to spear me like an idiot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I caught him, and I just looked at Murray and he goes, "I think you know what to do." And I DDT him right there on the tile floor, 
No. And, yeah. And he didn't sell it very well. He got up and he's like, I'm good. I'm good. And then all this blood starts running down his forehead. Oh, no. <laughs> so Murray looks at me and he goes, all right, brother. Now, but that, that was just instinctual. You got this. So you need to come. You need to come be a wrestler for us. And so, I mean, there, and the rest is history. We, we showed up that day in, uh, God, I think it was February. Uh, February or end of January, we showed up at the Emerald Dragon Dojo, uh, which was a kickboxing, Mick Doyle's kickboxing dojo off of uh, 120th and Center. Excuse me, 120th and, uh, and uh, Blondo. And so uh, Maury had the room next to it. We didn't have a ring. We didn't have really a lot of anything but the want to and the willingness to go in there and start to train and that's that's really where i where i started nice yeah i remember oh this was past that but i remember seeing you with uh mac well now magnum wrestling Mm -hmm. yeah and oh man some of the matches you had there (laughs) Well, I can, I can pretty much count on one hand the number of actual matches that I've wrestled that didn't involve some kind of uh, weapon. Um, to me, it's just, that's my comfort zone. I've got a, I've got a, uh, uh, I've got a high pain tolerance. And uh, to me, it's easier to tell the story with the, with the weapons. It's, uh, it, it's just, uh, I, I just like that style of wrestling and and if you look at it really my my character didn't didn't make a ton of sense my gimmick didn't make a ton of sense i was more of a sting i mean with the face paint and i was yeah. a, i was a, a definite baby face in in nebraska um so to make me a hardcore wrestler didn't make a make a heck of a lot of sense other than the fact that uh, i was willing to go out and spend a hundred bucks on stuff to hit people with <laughs> to make to make ten bucks on a Tuesday night, so more is just like okay, well you're a hardcore guy. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm a fan of that type of wrestling. There's just something about the hard hitting, intense nature of it that I mm-hmm. that can't off of it. Love it. Um. Well, the next thing I have because I was losing my train of thought there for a second. <laughs> um, A lot of wrestlers, they, I like to liken some of their road stories to very similar to me with the military and deployment stories, like the craziness that happens on both. And (laughs) trust me with some, some of my friends, like you know him, uh, Brandon War is Donnie Pepper Cricket, mm-hmm. Cornell, Bo got the uh, Joey Joseph, whatever the heck he's wanting to call himself now. <laughs> um, like I have sat in, at different venues and just sat with them and listened and all the real yeah. stories. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you got any entertaining ones? Well. I've got, I've got a couple of that. Magnum actually traveled up to Oakland, Nebraska. Uh, I, and I was at a couple of so, those. Yes, so the uh, the first one that they showed up at, um, there's not a lot of places for people to stay, and it's quite a drive. And so we had a decent-sized house in Oakland, so, and I lived in Oakland at the time. So um, so I'm like, you know what? Anybody wants to stay, they can stay. we got a big enough house. we got a little bar in the house. We can we'll, we'll drink some drinks and... And uh, just kind of, just kind of have a make a whole weekend of it. Mm. And so it was a Friday night, and everybody had to work on Saturday. It was a double shot. So Magnum was working Friday in Oakland, and and then in Council Bluffs at the uh, National Guard Armory at the time. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. On, on Saturday, so I went to both in, of them. Yes, they brought in some guys, and uh, and so we we worked the matches, and uh, we end up we closed down the bar, and then we end up back at my place, and. And uh, pretty much drank the entire house out of uh, out of alcohol. I think at one point in the night, I took my buffalo. I have got a, I've got a buffalo head, uh, and I took the buffalo head off. And I think I'm pretty sure I hit Dalty. Uh, I think I hit uh, Salty Dalty with that uh, a, a couple of times. Um, yeah, there was uh, at one point. I think somebody forgot to take the that somebody would be me forgot to take blankets out for everybody. 
Um, and so uh, Marion Fontaine, if anybody's, uh, uh, he was part of that part of that weekend. He got the handlebar mustache, real old, tiny looking wrestler. He's oh great, yeah, I, I remember. Uh, we woke up in the morning and he was rolled up in my towel rug on the floor. That one was uh, <laughs> that one was that one was pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it, the the road is the road is a place that uh, a lot of crazy things happen, and uh, and that's kind of where we like to keep most of the stories. Is uh, <laughs> yeah. is is on the road? I think I'll I'll, I'll kind of I'll kind of defer to some of the other guys to uh, throw any more secrets out there. I'll just keep with the Marion Fontaine wrapped up like a burrito in my cow room. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I, I, <laughs> I know uh, oh, one, well, couple that I like to tell from my deployment. There was a time in Bahrain when we were at the, the bar on base, and there was a bunch of British Navy there at the time. And, I mean, they're notorious drinkers. And me, I'm, I'm sitting there, we're all ordering pitchers, just like pitcher after pitcher. And... I don't know if they still do it, but at the time, they had uh, testing out this, whenever you come back from foreign ports, they breathalyzed you. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just say that night, there was no way in hell I was going to be passing the damn <laughs> And the, like, oh, boy. The only thing I remember was the people I was with, we were towards the back of the line, waiting and they're like, dude, go to your rack. We'll sign you back in. <laughs> so I, I, just, I just like hobbled off to my rack, fell, <laughs> fell asleep, and like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> and another time in Singapore, we, me and a couple guys, we sprung through this hotel package that like they had this private bar for only people with that package. Mm -hmm. And it was like free drinks, and you'd see people going in there, they'd order one at a time. Me and my friends, we were all like two at a time, and then we'd go up like eight, yeah. ten times. And we ended up getting called back early, and I ended up being the one by the phone, and somebody told me this, that the Apparently, they were like, oh, we need you back here by midnight. And I was like, midnight? Is it already midnight? I'm here. I can't be <laughs> in two places at once. <laughs> the, the guy hung up on me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're late. <laughs> but, he's like, like I said, parallels with the craziness. Oh, absolutely, it does. Yeah, it does. It's, it's a. I mean, they call they call wrestling a brotherhood for a reason, and it's, it's a, you're you're putting just just like in the military, not not to the extent that it is in the military, but when yeah. you're when you're when you're dancing, you're you're putting your life in that guy's hands, and he's doing the exact same thing, and he's Definitely. gonna trust you to do the right thing, and just like you're trusting him to do the right thing, and, and everybody goes home safe. Definitely, definitely, same similarity in the brotherhood aspect there i I've, I've been lucky enough in my transition back to being a civilian that i've caught on with a bunch of the guys out here and they've kind of taken me in in a way and mm -hmm. been huge um and all really thanks to jason strife because i met him at a show in Oceanside just north of San Diego and he said oh yeah no, I, I'm from up there I uh, I got this promotion and then I'm like when I came back I'm like I'm gonna look them up absolutely and here I am <laughs> mm -hmm. small world yeah definitely um, one thing I was curious about um, do you have any from your time in the ring any like favorite matches, favorite opponents? Absolutely, I do. Yeah. Um, there actually ended two of my favorite matches uh, was my first one uh, would have been March 23rd, 2001. 
uh, at uh, OWA Night of Champions. Um, and uh, that actually will be available on our website. Uh, coming up, uh, by the time this comes out, it'll be on there. Um, and uh, we, it's called the OWA Vault, Video Vault. Yeah. And we've got the old VHS tapes and the old DVDs. And uh, once a week, we're going to put out an entire show broken down into individual matches so you'll be able to watch some of these matches that haven't been seen in, in 20 years. And I'm, so, I'm definitely uh, going to keep an eye on that. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be awesome. So it was uh, March 23rd, 2001, OWA Night of Champions, and I was taking on Vince Black. And uh, he was uh, brought to the ring as a tables match uh, yeah. for the hardcore title. And um, he was brought to the ring by Jaden. It was Jaden Ryder at the time, but Jaden Grego. Yeah. Um, and I had uh, Maury Swanger. I had Big Mo, the commish, uh, in my corner. And uh, it was it was just a blast. We wrestled in a, we didn't have a wrestling ring yet. So we co-opted that match or that, that whole show with a kickboxing tournament, a kid's kickboxing tournament that was going on. So they do three or four kickboxing matches and then a wrestling match. And then we just kind of rotate. The whole show took like five and a half hours. It was <laughs> really long. And uh, it was a it was a boxing ring. So anybody that knows anything about wrestling knows that a boxing ring, it, that ain't no wrestling ring. And so that was, it was absolutely brutal. But uh, I mean, the, the match went off without a hitch and Vince was a, a a lot of fun to work with. He was very athletic, and uh, we were about the same size, and it, it worked out really well. Got to go through some tables. Got to, I got hit with some stuff. He got hit with some stuff. We told a good story, <laughs> and then honestly, my last, uh, my last match in Magnum was it was a, a five-way hardcore match, mm. uh, and it was uh, it was a super fly, and it was Joe Dozer, it was Donnie yeah. Pepper and it was Alex Kretzky. Um, ah, and I believe yes. I was at that one. Yes, that was at the Firefighter Union Hall, and that mm -hmm. was it was an elimination uh, hardcore match, and um, it was I was the first one to go out, and but it was the, the the limited time that I was in there. It was some of the most fun I've ever had in a ring because I I absolutely just adore every one of those guys that I was in a match with, and uh, they were so smooth took care of you the whole way and uh i i wish people could i wish there's a way that you could mic up uh wrestlers in the ring so you can mm. hear the conversations that we're having back and forth um that would be entertaining it would be, it's just the, just the silliness of of uh, some of those things and i won't i won't open the or open the curtain too much up into that but we're just talking to each other and and just hey lay here all right what do you got coming for me i said just lay here You'll see, and, then, and, then, and uh, it's. I think those two matches, those two matches alone, um, I, I will adore forever. Awesome, yeah. No, the OWA video vault that you talked about. When I post this on YouTube, I can definitely. Uh, it'll be probably after the one you talked about gets uploaded. I can definitely cool. post the link down in the description of that, so people can. Go sit I would love and that. Thank that. you. Yeah, I would Definitely. love that. Thank you. Definitely. I, I'm excited to see some of what y'all got coming there because that was a little before my introduction to indie wrestling. I didn't get introduced to independent wrestling until I was actually stationed in San Diego. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of guys that you that you're definitely gonna you're gonna see uh, you're gonna see Pepper Cricket. You're gonna see. Uh, uh, I, I mentioned uh, Jaden, Jaden Grego, Jaden, Jaden yeah. Ryder, um, yeah. Abu, Max, uh, Max Ooh. Magnus, um, uh, Hype Dottie. Uh, uh, there's, there's just there's a ton of guys in those matches that uh, uh, Babyface uh, uh, Tony Cortez uh, oh, yeah. was uh, it was on that was on that card too. So I mean there's there's just a lot of guys that got their start in the OWA in the early 2000s, and a lot of those guys were young young kids. <laughs> Uh, when uh, when they started and uh, like guys like me and Abu and and uh, Max, we were we were all in our late twenties, yeah, you know, kicking the crap out of thirty and and uh, we we're just looking at each other on these tumbling mats that first night, going, "What in the hell are we doing here?" So these kids are like seventeen years old. What are, this is this is a bad idea, but it ended up being uh, one of the best decisions I ever made. Awesome, yeah, no, it's going to be entertaining for me seeing 
some of the early Donnie Pepper cricket stuff because he's been like a big brother to me. I might technically be older than him, but he's been like a big brother to me. He actually yeah. inter- actually introduced me to my wife, and he I made him for being like a big brother to me and introducing me to my wife. He was the best man at my wedding. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Brandon's, Brandon's got a he's got a he's got a heart of gold and, and there isn't a better there is not a better man on this planet than Brandon Morris. Oh yeah, he is a top notch guy. Um, yes. Well, one thing that you know I can't really have you on and not talk about being behind the Nebraska Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. We got to talk about that. Um, what was the original idea behind starting the Hall of Fame? Sure, absolutely. So the um, I had to retire. I've got uh, the same same injury that um, that the Edge had. I've got stenosis in my uh, cervical spine. I didn't know it uh, until I had a ruptured disc, and the uh, MRI showed me that. And so I knew I couldn't have wrestle again. I don't have I don't have Edge money to go across the <laughs> all over the world to get surgeries. Yeah. So, so I, uh, I I couldn't wrestle anymore, but I still wanted to be around the guys. I still wanted to be around the shows. Um, and I am a, a huge history fan. Uh, I've always been interested in pro wrestling history. Um, Me too. I'm, I'm actually a, uh, I'm a uh, pretty accomplished uh, documentary filmmaker. I make that historical was documentary thing I films. Was to bring up, yeah. And so I thought, you know what? This is a good combination. Let's do this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, because there was no Nebraska Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, so there's such a rich history with uh, pro wrestling in this state that uh, I just thought it was a no-brainer. I've got the time yeah. to do it. Um, I've got the abilities to do it, and I've got the I've got the drive to do it. So let's let's put something together. It doesn't have to be anything enormous. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to have its own building. We can just have a place like our website, which is prowrestling-nebraska.com, and it gives people a place to come and to learn um, about the things that some of these guys did a hundred years ago in pro wrestling, and it gives people a chance to, you know, look at their accomplishments, the things that some of these wrestlers have accomplished so many decades ago that that people have forgotten about, and this is a way for us to give back, give back to them. That's that's awesome. Um, you guys have uh, what year? How many years has it been now? I'm trying to. 2018 was the first year. 2018, 2018. was the first year, oh. and then uh, I brought on uh, I brought on my co-director last year, uh, Mike uh, Mike Taylor, and is he's he's got he's got the the same the same drive that I have, the same love of history, the same. Uh, the same want to make sure that the uh, the guys that came before us get the recognition, and he was he was an amazing addition to the Hall of Fame, and I'm lucky to have. Him. Awesome. Um, let's see, running off some of the names that I can think of that are in it. You got. I can, well, I, can, I, can I can I can run off we're run them off right now for you. Oh yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Go ahead. So the uh, the class of uh, 2018 was Matt. The very first pick was Mad Dog Deshaun. Mad Dog Vashon, and then Maury Swanger, Baron Von Raschke, uh, Mantar, Austin Storm, Vern Gagne, and then Joe Dusak. And oh. you can go to you can go to every one of these. Uh, if you go to our website, and every year uh, you click on that, and then each individual person has their own page, and so it will contain pictures. Um, if there's video of matches uh, that we can find on the internet, that's, it's going to be there. Um, and then uh, there's usually a little biography. Some of them are a little behind on updating. Um, so we're, we're, we're still in the process of that. But uh, every every page or every, every person in the Hall of Fame has their own page. Uh, 2019, uh, we brought in Donnie Pepper Cricket. We brought in uh, Abu Colossus. PN News from Hardington, uh, Hardington, oh. Nebraska. We brought in uh, me, Gene Oberland, uh, Jumpin' Joe Scarpello, and then really the the cornerstone of that 2019 class was the DiBiase family. Mm. Uh, Helen Hill and Iron Mike DiBiase and Helen's son, uh, Iron, uh, uh, Ted, Di- uh, Ted DiBiase, obviously. 
Uh, yeah. those, those three, we inducted them uh, together as a group. Nice. I, yeah. I do remember that class very well. 2020 was a small class, and uh, but a small but um, small but mighty class. You got Tony Cortez, uh, who I mentioned earlier. You got Gorgeous George, who was born in Butte, Nebraska, lived out uh, in the Seward, York area until they were about seven, and then they, they, his family moved. Um, and at one point, Gorgeous George, uh, after he was doing his wrestling thing out in California, uh, Vanity Fair magazine did a poll, popularity poll. And at the height of his popularity, he was number three on a list of the top 10 most famous Americans uh, of all time. And he was behind <laughs> Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball. Wow. Those are the only two people that were more famous than him in the United States that year. Uh, wow. And then you had, and then you had Bill Danauer, you had uh, Dave Sullivan or the Equalizer. Mm. Um, Dave, Dave's a, uh, Bill's a good, a good buddy of mine. And, and uh, we were, he was, he was in such an amazing position in the WCW at the time, wrestling, uh, wrestling with the, the, the biggest names, with Kevin Sullivan and oh, Sting yeah. and Hogan and and all of those guys. And it was it was a, a dream come true for him, and uh, he had kind of a sour taste in his mouth after after being let go by, by WCW uh, for a lot of reasons that that, that other people can discuss. Um, yeah. But. Uh, he has refound that fire and that passion to be around the business because we do appreciate what he did and we do respect everything that he did while he was in the business and so it's really nice to have uh have bill uh back 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 where he belongs back next to the ring yeah 2021 was uh it was a nebraska riot squad so we've already got joe dusek in um, these guys, these guys were like the Shields. These guys were like the mm. NWO of their day. They yeah. were, it was, and they were all brothers. Ernie, Emo, Rudy, and Joe Dusek um, were four of the roughest, stiffest wrestlers mm -hmm. you could ever imagine through the '30s into the '50s. Yeah. Um, and they wrestled all over the country and just beat the living crap out of people when they came into town. Mm -hmm. You get Jason Strife. Mm. Uh, um, you've got uh, Max Magnus, an OWA original. And then you've got oh. Reggie Parks. Mm. Reggie Parks was the king of belts. Everybody knows Reggie Parks is the king of belts. He was the very first, uh, he created the very first belt for Joe Dusak to use in the Omaha area uh, for the tag. They used to carry around these giant six foot uh, trophies. Well, you mm. have to travel with these things. So they were taking them apart and putting them back together every time they get in the car and they were starting to break down. So Reggie was an amazing wrestler. He, uh, he would actually show up the day before the events at the Civic Auditorium and he would let a car drive over his chest, drive over his abs to prove to everybody, a Volkswagen bus would drive over his, his abs to prove to everybody that how strong he was. Mm. Uh, and so Reggie lived in Omaha from uh, early 60s to the mid 70s. He was based out of Omaha. Um, and then we've got the class of 2022 that we just finished up. Uh, oh, yeah. up announcing, we've got uh, Brian Blade uh, from the MWA. You've got Preston Maxwell, another OWA original. You've got Lance Cade um, mm. you, from from WWE fame, uh, tag team partner right. of uh, Trevor Murdoch. You've got yeah. Bill Munn. You've got uh, excuse me, Wayne Munn from the uh, late 1910s, early 1920s. You've got Chris Hadius from the PWP. A, Good a, a, of amazing, mine. amazing guy. You've got John Pesek, the Nebraska Tiger Man from the same era, 1919 to about 1940 is when he wrestled out of Ravana, Nebraska, just north of Grand Island. Oh. And then you've got Bill After. Bill wow. After is our first, if I'm looking at the list correctly, he is the first non-wrestler. Um, he is, I'm looking, he's the first non-wrestler to make the list. And the reason that Bill got in is Bill spent the 70s and the 80s writing for Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Mm. He wrote for some of the most uh, amazing pro wrestling magazines ever. So much so that they were called after mags. It may, mm. not have, he, it may not have even been a wrestling magazine that he wrote for, but people called wrestling magazines after mags. Well, yeah. as, a kid, as a kid growing up in Nebraska, your wrestling was limited to those two 30-minute shows until yeah. cable television came around. So mm -hmm. when I found a Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine at the local mini-mart, 
I got a, I got a, a yearly subscription to it, and it expanded mm-hmm. my knowledge and my love of pro wrestling so much so mm-hmm. that if it wasn't for a guy like Bill Acker, I may not be the fan that I am today. So I thought uh, Bill oh, yeah. was a Bill was a very deserving guest or uh, uh, oh. inductee. Oh yeah, very deserving. I know it was the same for me because I mean I turned thirty nine this July and yeah before internet really got going and during that time before Monday Night Raw really got going you were out here you were very limited on the pro yeah. wrestling you yeah. got so like anytime you got to go to a place and get one of those magazines it's like you saw how much was out there it was awesome right. yeah it was very it, it really opened up your you world to realize it, that you're not the only wrestling fan out there and that oh, what yeah. you're seeing is just a tiny, tiny piece of what's actually going on throughout the entire world. Oh, totally. And I know we've kind of talked before this about having them on. I'm hoping here soon because the I've been doing little sheets to get notes so if I get mm-hmm. off on tangent, I know <laughs> I know where I'm wanting to go. And like all the people that I've already confirmed, I got one for everybody, and I even I even made one for him. So I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, hopefully that works out. Definitely. Um, I know those past years you've had um, at a local show somewhere in the state where you have the people that are get, getting inducted that year mm-hmm. come and it's like kind of like a WWE Hall of Fame sort of deal. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, there... it's, it's, our, it's our induction ceremony and this year it's going to be, we're going, we're going back to Lincoln. We did it last year in Lincoln and it worked out so well just with the size of the building and um, I just really like the layout there. Um, for the first couple of years, we were we'd announce one or two people here and there at different uh, at different uh, promotions. Yeah. Um, and so this year on July 9th, uh, it's a Saturday. It's going to be in Lincoln at the Cornhusker Social Hall. It's going to be at the MWA show. Uh, okay. We're still we're still lining up guests. We're still lining up confirmation of uh, people that are going to be there, people that are going to wrestle, people that are going to just give speeches. But it's going to be a uh, it's going to be an event. Uh, if, um, if if everything kind of falls together the way that it's supposed to, uh, there will be. Uh, it won't just be a hey, show up to the show, and yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have guys give speeches at the intermission. It's, um, if, if everything works out the way the way we're hoping to, it's gonna it's gonna be an event. And, and oh. so July July 9th um, at the Cornhusker Social Hall at the MWA show. Uh, as soon as we get tickets available and ha- ticket packages available, we will let everybody know. All right, yeah, no, and that's actually just a couple days before my birthday, so I'm like, maybe I'm gonna have to plan on heading out there. Yeah, that was the other reason we were doing it. It's a birthday present for you, all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I always like to get with my guests some non-wrestling questions, and you mentioned about uh, being big into the documentary scene. Uh, talk about some of your uh, documentaries that you've been involved with. Well, my very first one that I did was a non-historical one. It was, I followed my wife. I'm uh, married to Jessica Dahl, who was mm. on Z92 for 17 years. Um, when she left radio, when she left Z92, I followed her that whole day with multiple cameras and interviewed her the whole time. And um, I chronicled her entire last day on the air. Um, with people calling up and, and uh, saying goodbye to her, and it, it's a, it it just rips your heart out because it was so, she was it, it she it was a hard day for her to oh, to, I leave, can imagine. to to leave radio. So that was that was my first one. Uh, my second one was a historical one about a Civil War veteran, uh, originally from Wisconsin, that moved to Oakland, Nebraska, that uh, became a banker, um, that had uh, just an absolutely storybook life. The, uh, the things that happened to this young man at such an early age, if, if I didn't have proof that they happened, I'd, I'd call BS on them. Yeah, and yeah. so that one's called A.E. Wells, A Man in His Park. 
Um, the, the next one that I did is called uh, Chatterbox, Cornhusker Hero. It, it follows the life of uh, Bob Chet. Bob Chet was uh, a Tecama, Nebraska native that became a World War II bomber pilot. Mm. Um, and uh, we were lucky enough to find some actual film footage uh, of some of the battles that we were in. Uh, from uh, the, yeah, so it's uh, that one actually. Uh, I got second place at the uh, Las Vegas International Film Festival uh, a few years ago. That one got the screen out there. Um, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, and that one's that was only 18 minutes. That one's pretty short, but uh, there's a, there's a lot going on in that 18 minutes. And then I've got two Nebraska football uh, historical documentaries. The first one's called All the King's Men, uh, and it follows the life of Nebraska head football coach William King Cole. Uh, And he was Nebraska's head coach from 1907 to 1910, um, follows his entire life. Um, And uh, that that one's done pretty pretty good uh, at, at a lot of the festivals as well. And then my latest one, uh, follows the life of the quarterback from that 1910 season. And it's called Bull Threat Football and Family. It follows the life of Jerry Warner from Beaver City, Nebraska. And um, it, he, he, once again, he had an amazing life uh, inside and out uh, of the, the football field. And uh, he was Nebraska's first because of the rule changes uh, that happened going into the 1910 season. He was Nebraska's very first dual threat quarterback that for the football. Mm and run the football. So, uh, and that one actually uh, screened uh, recently, this January screened out in Orlando at the Central Florida Film Festival. Oh, really? So it's, it's just something that something that I love to do. It's, I love finding these stories that have been forgotten and uh, to bring them back. And uh, right now my, my main goal uh, with my documentaries, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a time off for my research to kind of focus on the, the Hall of Fame stuff. But right now my goal is to get uh, King Cole and Jerry Warner inducted in the Nebraska Football Hall of Fame. That's my one of my one of my my big goals right now because it's been it's been 112 years. I think it's time. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I know I am definitely going to have to turn my dad on to those ones because he's big in the Husker history. I know. In and all of those are free. All of those are, are available now for free at my uh, website, Dodgewell, D-O-D-G-E-W-E-L-L.com. Every one of, them, okay. every one of those is, is available for free. Awesome. Yeah, no, he, he loves that. And uh, like my family on his side, we've had, for football at least, season tickets since the sellout streak started, since they even started nice. selling, since they even started selling season tickets um, his uncle had them, and then when his health faded, they did some legal paperwork. And of course, now well, my, everybody does. <laughs> now, now my dad and one of his brothers split the cost, and mm-hmm. so That's great. we're we're still they're still in the family. Well, it's um, uh, those those two stories are stories that nobody nobody had any idea even existed, <laughs> and it was it was five years of uh, five years of research to get that whole thing, uh, those, both of those two things put together. And if you are a college football fan, or if you are a, a, a Nebraska fan, you are, or just a football fan in general, you are going to absolutely yeah. love both of those. Definitely have to check that out. And speaking of Husker sports, that was another thing, you know, mutual thing that we like. One of my past jobs, one of my managers was actually a former player back oh i think johnny the jet roger days mm-hmm. uh Will, william slick steals the name sounds familiar yeah definitely it was the as of right now the only football player to senior day sing the national anthem in full his full hats and everything that's pretty cool Oh yeah, he he was a great guy. He ended up uh, shortly after I left that job. He, well, I was still there. He contracted I forget what form of cancer, and he ended up passing away. Oh, that's too bad. Ended up passing away a few years ago, and he was just a stand-up guy. I remember going to his 
funeral and I ended up sitting like right in the middle of a bunch of his teammates and right Tom Osborne was like two rows ahead of me and he even did a little eulogy and even in the midst of a sad occasion like that he got everybody laughing with this joke about meeting some guy that was a uh, 101 years old and asking him what was it like being that old and it, well not a lot of peer pressure <laughs> awesome oh yeah and hell when you're like us here in the state we the closest uh, pro teams are like Kansas City Denver, Chicago. Yeah, I'll go to that. Colts. And, like, the Huskers, that's, like, our big thing. You know, you get football teams, and that's the place to go. It is. That's all. That's all. And then, and, and, and I've heard people say it, and, and it's, it's kind of the truth. It's, it's all we got. It really is, because we've got no unity when, when it comes to, to pro teams. You're exactly right. We're, we're, eight hours from Chicago, we're nine hours from Indianapolis, we're three hours from, from Kansas City, we're, we're eight hours from Denver, uh, and then, yeah. and then the, the Vikings fans. I mean, we're, 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 we're kind of in a, in a black hole here, and, and not everybody oh. can be Kansas City fans. Yep, no, I'm, I'm a Packers guy myself. So. <laughs> oh, well, and Packers is another one. Packers is a huge one. Yep, yep. Um, all right, so thing to kind of round it off i like to do a little bit of a speed round sort of thing i name off some people and you give me your thoughts on it excellent all right a couple of these guys will have for the uh nebraska pro wrestling hall of fame i gotta mention some of them babyface tony cortez we talked about him a little bit oh he's tony's tony's a sweetheart i've known that guy for i've known that guy for going on uh going on 25 years now and he's just a he's a good dude he's one of the most consistent workers i've uh, i've uh, ever met oh yeah i i'd have to agree he's every i haven't seen too many match of it, matches of his that haven't been well well to borrow from uh good old jr slobber knockers the the I tell you what the the, the death matches that he did with uh, I've Gotti the barbed wire oh is, yeah I, I and everything that I have ever done pales vastly pales in comparison to either one of those two matches that I that, that I've seen with those guys do that so so uh, no he's a, a he's, he's amazing okay um well speaking of one of the guys you also just brought up Hype Gotti. He's, he's a, he is a, uh, he's a character. We're going to go with that. He's, he is, he is a character. I actually, I actually gave Hype Gotti and he hates uh, me telling the story because it's the only story I have about it. Uh, but I, uh, I gave him his first gimmick and uh, he, I think he only did it for about two months. But when we gave it to him, when Moore and I gave it to him, it was, he, he went, he went whole hog, whole hog. It was kind of a disco inferno. Um, uh, rip off. Basically, I went to I went to uh, we had some old '70s pants and an old uh, silk shirt, so we gave it to him. He was he was Disco Derek Anderson, was his name. And, and I I can imagine knowing what I know of him, he probably isn't too thrilled. To but at the time, but at the time, he was 17 years old. So you know, he was just he was just thrilled to get a chance to get into the ring, and he was going to work with whatever anybody gave him. Oh, yeah, no, that's the way you got to do it when you're getting started. Sometimes you, whatever comes your way, you just want to get in there. Absolutely. Um, well, another guy we brought up quite a bit, uh, Maury Swanger, Big big Mo. I mean, I know they also call me that, but. <laughs> <laughs> he is, uh, he's that dude's like a brother to me. He is uh, um, just a. He, he gave me my opportunity, um, and uh, I'll, I'll never be able to. I'll never be able to pay him back for that. And um, there's, there's not a, 
there's not a, a more innocent man, uh, and, and not not in a naive way, but just yeah. he's, he doesn't he doesn't have an angry bone in his body, and and uh, in the wrestling business, that's a that's a rarity. So uh, he's uh, he's a dude's a dude's an angel. Oh yeah, no, all the interactions I've had with him, nothing but pleasant. Mm-hmm. Um, last two here, the guy that. You have inducted, I believe it was last year, Jason Strife. Once again, uh, Strife, he he let a he let a 41 year old man, which you might want to question his thought process there. <laughs> he let a 41 year old man get back into wrestling to prove to himself that he can do it again, and <laughs> uh, and he's always willing to listen, um, and which is great because I'm always willing to give my opinion, um, and uh, he's. That, that there there has not been a better professional wrestler, and I will stand by this opinion. There's not been a better professional wrestler in the last 40 years to come out of the city, uh, the, the the metro area, than Jason Strife. Oh, it would be hard to argue that. I gotta admit, and like we kind of talked about a little before we started recording, and I, this is gonna be exclusive to this, the one of the first episodes I'll be recording in May is actually with him. That's awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear it. Oh, I'm I'm looking forward to that one like no other. And next one kind of lead off with the guy that's wrote the more nationally known guy that I kind of borrowed a little phrase there from Jim Ross. Jim Ross is the voice of our my 20s and my 30s. Um, watching him when he was at WCW, uh, watching him hit, and just when you think of when you think of watching wrestling, the this is the voice in my head that that is narrating anything that's happening is Jim Ross's voice. And Jr. is a Jr. is an icon, and I don't. I think every generation has their announcing icons. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Jr. is um, I'll be 50 in May, and Jr. is is my announcing icon, hands down. Oh, definitely, right up there with mine too. And I'm extremely happy seeing how happy he is now with uh, AEW. I think right. he's doing some amazing work there. Yeah, he definitely is. All right, so. That's about all I have, but I wanted to give you the chance to plug upcoming events and your social media so people can go follow and maybe attend some of these events. Absolutely. We are uh, at uh, prowrestling-nebraska.com is our is our website, um, and that's where you're going to find that OWA video vault. Um, we've got a uh, Facebook page. We've got a Twitter page. I believe we've got a uh, an Instagram page. And if we don't, I'll I'll make one up by the time this comes out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, and we are we are constantly uh, constantly online. We are sharing um, we are sharing posts from every every single business, every single Fed that works in the state of Nebraska, whether it's Magnum or PWP, MWA, NLW. We are we're we're posting because it's we're not we're not about one company we we are about one industry we're about one business we're about one brotherhood and and we are about to make sure that people can get out and support local wrestling that's yeah. what we're about and and that can't happen if the word doesn't get out there so I appreciate I appreciate a podcast like yours it gives us a chance not only is it fun to sit around and talk wrestling. Oh. Um, but it's it's fun to get the word out there on on these things and to talk about things like our traveling display that we take out to these events. Oh yeah, that, uh, that we've taken uh, statewide and we're going to continue to do so. And we may have some big things coming uh, where we may be invited to some events outside of the the, the uh, state of Nebraska um, wow. very soon. And we're extremely excited about that. Um, I mean that's that that's really what we're here for. Back in the day, it was I was a national champion at smashing people in the face with things that I've hidden underneath the ring, and I've had to transition <laughs> into national champion at making sure that everybody remembers everything that happened in wrestling before they were born. And that's that's really mm-hmm. where we're at. And that's awesome. I will definitely when we post this, 
We'll be posting links in the description for the website. And like like you said, with uh, with you, I'm not just about one promotion. I'm reaching out everywhere. I want absolutely not 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 even just in Nebraska, but I mean especially in Nebraska since I live here. But just independent wrestling in general, because there is so much out there that if you don't like one particular thing, if you just take the time to look, you're going to find something you're going to enjoy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep up the good work, man. These, these are great. They're entertaining as hell. I appreciate it, man. All right. All right.